last week through the you know postponement up to now um you know just what's it been like with the team and how have y'all kind of managed um, your time and i don't know emotions as well through this um i agree a lot with coach i'm not gonna try and be his uh echo but uh, we focus on we have focus on us and we've had uh uh, Max and TJ getting all the reps, obviously, so they're getting, you know, or they have been getting significant uh, time that they, you know, in previous weeks they hadn't really had uh, because they're running with the one. They're taking turns at, at the one po position at quarterback. But, uh, and on top of that, you know, they're gaining all that experience. Uh, and, you know, with everybody else, defense, O-line, D-line, uh, we're, we're focused on, on what we can do better and not so much what other teams are doing, but what we're not doing. And uh, I think that's going to roll over into the game on Saturday and how we kind of changed our preparation slightly uh, to worry about us doing things that we need to be doing better and things that we can improve on that have uh, nothing to do with the opposing team. And uh, in a lot of these games, and I think it's been reiterated a couple times, we've beaten ourselves. And, uh, and I think we're going to do better and have a better effort at that of not beating ourselves and not, and not putting ourselves in a... Uh, position to you know that we have in the past that that we um, we just need to improve our, our play overall on both sides of the ball and I think uh, I think we're doing that. And I mean, following up with that, I mean, I'm, you've been on this team a while and have been with Miles Brandon here. I mean, what what's he been like behind the scenes working through this? And how have have you kind of approached the quarterbacks? I know from your I don't know from your uh, tenure on the team. And what... uh, no, I haven't yet. Um... I've, I've talked to Miles a little bit. He's he's resting and he's still watching film and he's still you know uh, in the film room giving you know guys advice and he's uh, he's you know he even said it yesterday in his tweet that he's a fighter and uh, he's not going to let our team uh, in t from a preparation standpoint be lacking and uh, I, I really believe that he's going to be right behind uh, T J and Max helping them in any way he can behind the scenes. I don't know if he's playing or not playing, but I know he's going to be in that room in their ear, helping both of them as much as he can for whoever plays on Saturday. And if not, both of them play, I don't know. But um, I know that he's doing, like I said, everything in his power to make sure we're, we're going to put forward the best effort we can against South Carolina. Hey, Zach. I mean, obviously you've been on minor league baseball teams. You've been on five teams here. I guess just how would you kind of, it kind of goes with the first answer you said, but how would you kind of evaluate just the mental makeup of this team and kind of how you guys got to where you are? Um, you know, it, we got a lot of, like I said, we, we, last year we had a bunch of older guys. We had, I don't know how many guys go to the NFL, but, uh, you know, the, the makeup of last year's team was different. The whole, the whole older um, core of the team was, was underdog players. Uh, you had Joe, who was an underdog. You had Clyde, who was an underdog. You had Justin Jefferson, who was here three years. We had an underdog attitude as a team, and, and there, it was instilled in older guys. Now we just have a lot of young guys that are inexperienced. And it's just a completely different makeup in general. Guys that are still figuring out how to prepare for games, you know, how to watch film correctly, how to interpret defenses, offenses correctly. And so it's, it's you know, we got some growing pains, and that's with every team. And uh, But like I said, it, the preparation you're learning now and these, these players are learning now, uh, is, for many of them, is going to roll over at the next level. you got to learn how to prepare here, because if you don't know how to prepare here, you're going to have a hard time preparing in, in the NFL. Um, so I feel like that's, that's a big uh, stepping stone where, you know, that we're dealing with now, like we, you know, we had, I know we had PQ. I, I said this last week to somebody. I said when I saw Patrick Queen in our facility, he had an iPad in his hand at all times. It was him and Clyde. They always had their iPads on because they're always watching film and it reflected their gameplay. They knew exactly what to do. And hell, they still make mistakes and they make mistakes of aggression. Everybody makes mistakes, but they knew that they were going to ace their test on Saturday, and it was, it was because of the preparation that they put in and their you know, their work ethic and want to, and that's why they ended up being first rounders. Hey, Zach, Michael, the channel too. Congrats on being uh, probably the most consistent part of the football team. Um, Thank you. What are you seeing, <laughs> what are you, what are you seeing uh, in teams right now and, and in your game? Um, and is it just, is it, like you said, the preparation? And, yeah, I, I, example I guess others? I guess our room the specialist room is probably the most experience uh, experienced room here and uh, being here five years now uh, you just know you know I've had bad moments and I've had good moments and now you know how to you know like coach Max has done really well with with 
developing our scheme and how we go and attack teams. And ultimately, it's the, it's been it's been the same thing for a few years, but it, we we've opened it up a little bit this year with uh, the the hang time measurement of it. He wanted me to put the ball closer to the sidelines last year. Well, this year he gave me more leeway. That's just an example of of him changing uh, to to what what our strengths are as players. And with Cade, he's just been obviously doing well because he had so much experience last year, and he had a you know in my opinion had a hell of a freshman campaign. And so he's got all the confidence in the world. And I'm holding his. Uh, footballs, and he's uh, he's you know like I said he's got the, the most confidence in me, and uh, it's just kind of been a, a well-oiled machine in terms of our room. Um, but with other guys, you didn't you didn't have a, a lot of these freshmen didn't come in to see how the preparation and how things were uh, different. I guess they didn't get to get a uh, not a schedule but a uh, a rubric. They didn't get to see the rubric of the weekly preparation towards Saturday. They didn't get to watch Clyde because Clyde's gone. A lot of them are you know true freshmen playing. They didn't get to see how Christian Fulton, Grant Delpit, all these guys practiced on Tuesday. You know, it was an attitude, and it was it was the uh, we stacked ga- days together. We prepared. Uh, uh, like I said, the, the guys were just uh, they had a um, everybody was on a mission, and it's not that we we aren't on that now. We've just lost the um, a little bit of the rhythm of the preparation side of it, the rhythm of how. You prepare for Saturday. I know I keep reiterating myself, but that's like the the biggest thing that I've noticed, uh, and and how we've changed year to year. Hey, Zach, you know I know you mentioned Cade, uh, and you guys have been working closely together the last couple of years. But just what have, what has been the biggest growth that you've seen from him from year one to year two? And then also you just mentioned obviously the freshman preparation and trying to get those guys caught up. I mean, how have you, who as an older guy, gone about trying to? teach some of these younger guys how to how to make those preparations and get you know get them more up, caught up to speed uh k k oh, came okay. in with a uh, uh uh a very good mentality he he already expected himself to be you know really good and that's that's a great quality to have when especially at the kicker position he knew he was going to be good he He's the guy that can dissect film and tell you what you're doing wrong and why your kick went right, why it went left, why, why you, you know, he knows all that. He knows more about punting than I know about punting, but um, and that's and that's fine for me. And what I do works, and what K does works, and that's how that, that makes us unique in our room. Uh, and I'm sorry, what was the second part of that question? Sorry, the second part was just kind of how have you, as a kind of older guy and kind of a leader, gone about teaching some of these freshmen how to learn, you know, preparation. You know, after seeing it last year with Grant and Patrick and all the other guys you mentioned. I haven't, I haven't been able to really get in the heads of uh, the the younger guys this year. We didn't have the same, uh, I guess, schedule obviously because of COVID. We didn't have the same summer. I didn't, you didn't create the same relationships with players that you had in the past because we missed out on almost the entire spring and then we missed out on almost the entire summer so things were a lot different this year you didn't have that same chemistry going into fall camp that you would have in years past just because things were so differently uh, working so differently and then like I said a lot of the guys in the spring didn't have those Tuesday practices they didn't have those you know Saturday scrimmages we missed out on a ton of live reps because of COVID and I and you know that's I don't want to say I hate making excuses like that, but a lot because a lot of teams have had to go through that. Uh, I just feel like we we were more susceptible to what's you know what's happened because we've had so many young players, young players that did not get to see how it was done last year and the and the, and the method and the model and the, the the foundation of how games were prepared for last year was just different and the reps that we're taking leading up to the season were different. We still practice a lot, but we missing out on all those spring reps and full pads and all that was a big deal. Um, like I said, and, and not having, in my opinion, not having that, even on the offensive side, we've had enough reps with Miles because Miles has been here long enough, but a lot of the freshman quarterbacks didn't have the same amount of throws that we would have had in years past. And uh, I, f- I really feel like that's something that we missed out on. And again, everybody missed out on that. We just we just have to, we're, we're making up ground a little bit in that category, in my opinion. Zach, you, you talked about the um, coach giving you much more leeway on punting. Has that helped your punting average uh, hang time this year? And uh, also, if you've addressed this before, I'm sorry, but the NCAA did approve uh, a, a blanket extra year for uh, student athletes if all student athletes if they want to come back I know you kind of made a little comment on Twitter when it came out with 
Are you seriously thinking about returning in 2021, or is that still a decision you have to make? That's still a decision I have to make, but I mean, it's hard. To, I mean, I've been here five years. What's another year, right? I'm, I could be tenured here shortly, but uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's been it's been a dream. I can't, you know, when I got here, I, I played multiple positions. I gained 40 pounds. I did all this, and then, you know, now I'm like I'm still here. It's just it's kind of bizarre. Uh, I know I need to get my life in order, uh, but <laughs> and right now I'm 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 living the dream here at LSU. And I have been for a long time. And shoot, how many how many guys get to say they won a national championship here? There's only three teams. Uh, and like I said, I've been I've been a Tiger since I was a kid. So that's that's a dream come true for me. Uh, and then uh, with with Coach Mack, uh, he's he last year he emphasized uh, a lot more sideline punts. And it, and it I to get more accuracy on my punts, I would substitute my power. And he noticed that from 2018 to 2019. Uh, in terms of distance, hang time, etc. Well, in 2018, our philosophy was a little bit different. It was just kind of just crush it, you know, you know, uh, you, you dig down in there and, and let it rip. And then this year, he's kind of altered where he wants the location of the ball, which freed up my ability to just kind of lay into it. And what, what's kind of happened now is I have that mindset of okay, I can still, you know, I can still crush this ball, hit a four eight four nine punt. But I'm not, I don't have that, that fear of it leaking toward the middle of the field because he's like, Zach, if you hit a 42-yard 4-8 punt, the likelihood of them returning that punt with Racy McMath is at Gunner is almost impossible because the dude's a freak. So uh, we kind of went back to my 2018 mentality. Um, and we're still sticking with a landmark, but the landmark isn't as extreme as the sideline like it was in 2019. And like I said, that, that, that mindset uh, last year, I hit some good punts last year and put them on the sidelines, et cetera. But... Um, knowing I have a little bit more leeway has allowed me to get more hang time. And as you can see, I've gotten a lot more fair catches. And that hang time has been a huge factor with, like I said, with Racy and John Trey Kirkland, are probably the two best athletes on our team, letting them go eat. And Racy has a fumble. Uh, and, that, and I think we're going to get a lot more of them. And guys better start fair catching some more balls because I'm feeling pretty, pretty comfortable hitting the ball with Racy McMath, uh, you know, as dangerous as he is. Hey, Zach, Wilson Alexander from The Advocate. You're sort of just joking about now how long you've been at LSU and your role in the team sort of as the most senior guy. Is that something – you obviously joke about it a lot on Twitter. Is that something that you sort of joke about in your day-to-day -day life as well, or is it sort of just something that you like to make light of on yeah. social media? How do you kind of go about that? Almost every player on the team kind of kind of messes with me about uh, how long I've been here and who I've played with because I was here with Leonard, obviously, and I was here under Les Miles. So it's kind of a running joke that I hear on a daily basis. I hear it from equipment managers. I hear it from Bonnet. I hear it from uh, I hear it from a bunch of people. Everybody calls me old man, grandpa. I've heard it all, even Coach O. But I, I I'm not. I have no complaints. I'm I'm still in college. How can I? You know, we won a national championship last year. I got to play with some of the best players in the NFL. Uh, I have relationships that'll last a lifetime. And now I'm just trying to use you guys to give me some connections for the business world, right? But uh, <laughs> now I'm just trying to. You know, I'm just living the dream. I I played baseball. And like it's, I think I forgot who, if it was Brody or one of one of y'all said, uh, Zach, if somebody told you when you were 18 years old you just signed a professional base co baseball contract that you would not make it to the major leagues and you'd be a punter at, at LSU, I'd laugh in your face. And so like I, that's that's been a huge you know positive light. Like my you know I was in a dark place when baseball ended, but getting here and getting to go through all this and and enjoy uh, you know especially now that I'm done with undergrad. Just really getting to sit back and enjoy what's what's happened here, and, and watch Coach O uh, transform this team uh, and the attitude of this team, uh, the way he has, and, and building the team last year. And I shoot, I, we're going to build another one. I don't I don't know what year it's going to be, but I guarantee you we're going to build another one. And I think we have a lot of core players on this team that'll be a part of that one. Uh, but being one and two, I don't doesn't I don't think reflects the ability of our team. I think our our ability is up there with anybody's. We just have to perform better and prepare better. <clears throat> we'll wrap up with Glenn and then Jacques. Zach, do you do you have any friends your own age, and do they tell you you know when you're getting out of school? Uh, they oh yeah, I got a bunch. Uh, they text me after games, and uh, they talk a lot of smack, saying how uh, I, I don't they don't they wouldn't even like if they had an opportunity to, to play at 31 years old next year, like what are you even thinking about? The business world can wait. You can work 30 years at a job. You can't play six years of, of college football again. And uh, they, they, they heckle me a good bit. And uh, I'm in like a fantasy football, fantasy baseball league, and it's always like the butt of jokes and, you know, 
we got the oldest college football player playing, you know, stuff like that. And but no, they 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 love it because they can say, "Wow, you're the last player. It's it's going to be older than me forever. Like there'll be another player at LSU that's older than me. You're, you're kind of keep a hope alive for me in my life." And I'm just like, oh, "God, I don't, you know, you know, don't do that with uh, you know my mindset because when I come out, I'm going to be I'm going to be having a fight against guys for you know I'm going to be competing for a job too. Uh, you know, hopefully after the NFL that is, but." Um, do you, do you have how many how many degrees do you have? Are you a graduate student right now? I'm a graduate student. I just have an undergrad degree, uh, but yeah, I'm right. I'm, I'm in grad in school. What? what does that uh, mean? I, I, it's it's three minors: is like business, uh, f philosophy, and uh, I did geology. And you're a graduate student in? Uh, well, I'm actually I didn't take the GMAT. I want to take the GMAT. I didn't take it during COVID, uh, so I need to take the GMAT so I can try and get into uh, what is the business program. At LSU. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Hey Zach, uh, Jacques from Channel Nine. Have enjoyed covering your career. I can remember when you were playing baseball, Zach Green. It feels like uh, a lifetime ago and everything. But um, you mentioned the NFL. Um, we saw Ferguson get drafted last year and everything. Could you imagine yourself a, a 31, 32 year old rookie and uh, and punting in the league for a long time? Yeah, I. Uh... I, I, I could. Uh, I just don't know if somebody's going to take a chance with the draft pick with a 31-year-old punter. Uh, um, but I, I do believe that they would sign me to free, in free agency. I do think that would happen. But, I, I, again, I could be wrong. I don't know. I haven't talked to GMs or scouts or anything. Um, I'm just trying to, you know, do my job at the best of my ability. It's a, and, you know, my, it's my chess match. Within, it's a game within a game. I'm trying to do that as best as I can to put my, my team in the most uh, advantageous Especially the defense, the most advantageous position I can. Uh, but no, I, 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 if I got drafted, shoot, I would, I'd probably cry. But uh, I don't know if a team's going to take a risk like that on a 30-year-old uh, punter. Uh, and again, like I said, maybe I'll, maybe if I run like a four-six forty or something, they might draft me. But I don't know if I have that, uh, that skill set in me right now. So, <laughs> but we'll, we'll see. Like I said, I know somebody will take a chance on me in free agency, and I'll have to beat out a guy. But uh, a draft pick, that, that would be a dream if that, if that came true. Thank you, Zach. No problem.